All right, guys, welcome back to the Real Gentleman YouTube channel at the Hunter Collective. Uh, today, I've got Juan in the chair. Now, we're in a bit of a sort of uh, a crossroads with his hair because we were just talking then. Um, he's had skin phase before, um, but I think he wants to keep it more length in it, but he isn't too sure he wants to do it, and he's asked me to suggest a new style. Now, we had a consultation, and um, as soon as he walked in, I clocked he was in good shape. And then I seen his jiu-jitsu top. So I thought, okay, this guy trains, right? So we just found out he's a, uh, he, he teaches jiu-jitsu uh, in a local uh, gym. Now, I asked him if he wants something low maintenance. He said, yeah. Want something short? Yeah, I bought a new style. So I was just thinking, he did ask for a side part, but as I explained, it's so hard to maintain. Especially if, if he's training people, like say, if you're doing, hey, what are you, what are you, do you work like super early and then super late? Do you work, yeah. So, Having to maintain a side part all the time would be a nightmare. It'd be heavy pomade probably to calm the curls down. Um, and also keep it up to regular haircuts as well. But also having a comb, having all this, it, I don't, I just personally think it'll work with his lifestyle being what he what he does for a living. Because you've got a thing is as well, take into account what they do for a living. That's one thing I always say, because there's no point in suggesting something that's gonna be really hard to style and maintain if they are personal trainers or if they teach martial arts or if they work in an office like silly in the morning till silly o'clock at night as well. So um, I just thought what would be really nice from today is looking at his face shape and also this guy trains, so he's got his neck is muscly as well. Now that sounds a bit mad, but when you start training, especially the job that he does, you work in a lot of upper body as well, a lot of core, but he starts to build muscles in his neck. Now that alters the frame of the face. So I have to take into account how wide his neck is because if I start going short through here, it'll make him look really wide. I don't want that. I want to make it really lean. So what I suggested for him was that he'd like to stick to a three. I'm happy with a three, but I think if we just tape it in the edges a little bit lower, so working maybe from a three down to a two down to a low one and a half and working it through, that would give more shape to the corners here. So we leave a little bit of length through here, which will start to widen the top of his head, the round of his head, to blend in with how wide his neck and his jaw is as well. So I think that'll work well. Um, on the top, I was just thinking, go with the curls that he's got. I think, you know, if, if your hair texture is curly, Unless you've got the time to blow dry it, you've got the time to use products, great. If you don't, like I don't think Juan has, I think just go with the curls. We'll get a good shape cut to the curls. So just cut it into a nice, sort of slightly, slightly square shape for the top so it, it blends in with the sides. But just go for like, kind of like a one length uniform cut all over. It'll grow out uniform, it'll suit him, and it'll be so low maintenance as well. So even if he just puts a bit of salt spray on, even if he doesn't put anything in it, it still looks nice. But I think more so for this haircut today is that it's not really, I wouldn't say it's a restart, I'd say it's more just getting a shape that will work for him. So again, showing him how to style it, which would be key, and also trying to frame the face. So it's, quite, it's a challenge in terms of getting this to be the perfect look for him with very minimal effort for him to do as well. So I'll give it a wash, I'll give it a condition, and then we'll start. Right guys, so I've just um, shampooed and conditioned it. So it's a blank canvas for me now, so I can see exactly how, it's, how it falls naturally, um, where the curl is, how strong the curl is as well. As you can see, it's got it has got what, what I call a C curl, more than an S curl. So an S curl is what you see on a lot of people where it almost looks like the letter S, right? A C curl is almost like a ringlet, right? And as you can see, when this is wet, it's really starting to curve back on itself. So if that was longer, that'd be really tight, okay? But, he, but Juan's hair isn't, uh, it isn't thick. It's like a, a finer texture. So it's quite, it'll be a slightly looser, which is really good for him, more than trying to maintain the curl. So it's actually good for me to cut it as well, because it's easier to, to create a shape as well. So I can get it through my fingers a lot easier. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna cut the shape in for him, all right? So I don't want to do this into an asymmetric haircut or anything. I want this to be just completely uniform, following the shape of Juan's head. What is gonna create the squareness through this is where we work on the side. So when we talk about finding the face shape, what I look at is trying to find where it is. So we're looking down here. So the bottom of the comb and the jaw, on the side, and that's what we're looking at. So we need to maintain weight through here. As you see, there's quite a large gap to the temple area to here. So I want to try and create the weight here. That is where the squareness comes through. And I want it to really work in with his face shape, all right? So a lot of guys, when they, you know, when you get a lot of guys in the chair regularly, and if they don't train, especially a specific, like say, you know, they go to the gym or whatever, it's different. But when you're training something like martial arts, you do tend to build muscles 
in different areas that you probably wouldn't do if you went to the gym, like hands, neck, for example. I know we spoke about this, but this is quite interesting to say because I'm not just looking at the face shape, I'm looking at the neck as well. So I want to make sure that I don't sit this too tight in so it makes them look larger. I want it to look really perfectly lean. Um, so that's what I've got to take into account today as well. So just don't just look at the face shape, look at everything else as well. So by doing that, that's why I want to keep a bit of weight here because I want it to really, I want it to almost come in line with the side of his neck. So that's the widest point, what you can see from the collar. So that's what I want to keep in mind as well. So I'm going to start on the top. I'm going to comb it all out from the crown. Now I want this to sit naturally. So again, I want this to be super low maintenance. So I need to cut this from the way the crown grows. So that way I'm not going to cut anything too short. I'm going to follow his natural growth pattern, which is key. So it's something that is a very low maintenance, uh, little if not, if no product. And then um, let it blend into the sides as well nicely. So I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny bit off the top. I don't think it needs a lot off. I think it's more about creating the shape through these bits here. All right, so starting from the front, just going to work back and I'm going to stop at the crown. And his crown's quite low on the back of his head. Usually a crown can be, tend to sit about here and here, but his is sitting just right at the flat back of the head here. So we can still work to this section here before we get to the crown. So again, don't stop at the, at the same point all the time. Follow the, the shape and the growth pattern of the client. So his crown is a bit lower down, so I'll work a little bit lower down. So I'll pick this straight up. Straight up, I'm just going to tidy up the ends. As you can see, it's a little bit jaggedy at the ends, which curly hair, especially finer hair, you want to keep nice and straight. It, it gives it a bit more of a thicker feel to the hair as well, and also grows out nice as well. It's just a very, very light trim. So I'm looking at what the sort of longest point, the longest uniform point there was in this hair, in the top of these sections. And I'm going with that as my guide, and then just working all the way through. But remember to keep your sections nice and tight. And then I'm going to move on to my final section now, just before the crown. Put it straight out towards me, I'm not going to over direct it, I'm going straight out towards me, following the shape of his head. And straight across. I'm just working down. Now I'm working on this section here, again, the same finish points as before. Now I'm going to follow this round again, following the shape of his head. I'm cutting this wet. Now, I know he's got curly hair, but it's a lot finer in his hair as well. And I find, because it's so short, I just find it easier to section. We're not looking to try and create loads of like loose movement through this. We're just looking for a very short, neat, kind of easy, low maintenance hairstyle. So doing it wet, it's just easier to get through my fingers because it's slightly finer as well. So that's why I'm cutting it wet. Normally I cut curly hair dry, but this type of curl, the finer curl, I tend to do it a little bit wetter, a little bit damper, just because it's easier to, to work through my fingers. So that one last little look at the crown. Okay, there we go. Move around with it. There's my last section. I'm going to follow the hairline as well. So bring my finger down to rest the hair down because it's curly hair. When you press it down, it straightens it out. And we just match it up. So rest the blade on his forehead. Just work around with this. Using that finger for support and to straighten it up as well. And just freehand any curl. Straighten that off. There we go. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna dry it off now. So I'll apply a little bit of salt spray just to dry in through the curls, just to give that kind of second day feel. Just break them curls, give a little bit of strut to them curls when we're drying it through as well. So I'm gonna dry it very loosely, my fingers. I'm just separating that hair. Then just working my fingers around to bring up that curl. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start my blend from about here on the three and then just taper it down into a low one and a half. I'm going to come off about here. So we're still going to keep that nice squareness through the corner by the crown. Right. 
There we go. Now onto my two and a half. I'm just gonna work down. Bending up, pulling off as I get to the three. And onto my two. Working again, a bit lower down now. I'm pulling off as I get to the two and a half. Yeah. Now because it's here, it's got that curl and that separation to it. I'm gonna work with my one and a half guard as well. Normally I just straight go straight into my uh, my one guard with a lever down, but because I want this to be a lot more seamless, I'm working onto the one and a half guard as well. So be a bit more precise when I'm working down in my guards than I usually would, but straighter here as you can tend to blend that out easier. So, one and a half guard, lever down. I'm working a bit lower down. I'm coming up and off to where my two was. I'm gonna try and comb down the hair after, after you've cut it as well, just to make sure it's starting to blend in nicely. Then straight up into the closed guard. A little bit lower down. There we go. Work on it open to start with. So it is a one and a half. And work up from the bottom. And work it up and off the head. So you're working up into your one and a half guard. Now while I'm on the neck, I'm going to work through my guard as well into the one. So we start to define a nice taper to the neck. Now I'm going to blend this in now. So looking for my guide, which is there, and use that and then work down really, really small sections. Finishing when I get my three. Working down from the bottom. I'm just getting lighter, pressing lighter against the head and gradually pulling off at the comb until I get to my three length. It becomes nice to see you stand there. Let's have a look in the mirror. really coming into line with the neck now. So onto my minis, using the size one comb again. I'm just tapering the edges now on the hairline. Just one or two hairs make that little difference. Put that up. Now I'm gonna move to the small side of the comb. I can see through, through years of uh, Juan's uh, jiu-jitsu training, you can see he's had a lot of uh, sort of you know injuries to the ear, so that can become very very stiff and quite hard to move. So just do what you can to get a nice seamless line. That's why it's quite nice to work through a smaller comb with smaller teeth, because I can work around the ear quite nicely without having to move it too much. And again, we're not looking to cut into the hairline an awful lot, just to tidy it up. So I'm not cutting it in like this. I'm keeping it nice and wide. We'll work through the blend. 
and just remember to try to create that nice squareness in the head shape. And just cross checking my clip away. Just working right down to that blend. The thing is with clippers, sometimes the teeth can kind of push the hair apart and not always cut it perfectly, so it's always nice to go over. I'm picking the light length of comb as well, so this is a, what I'd go down to like a one half to a two width. So that way I know if I press too hard, it's just going to still blend in. And nice and slow just helps to take out any sort of um, problem areas or any bits that look a bit darker, a little bit longer. Just try not to cut that too short. And that way it all blends in nicely. Now I'm going to switch to my smaller scissor and smaller comb and work down from that one and the, and the zero into the half and just work that up and just make that seamless as well. There we go. And that is pretty much it. How's that looking for you, mate? Is that alright, yeah? It's nice, isn't it? It's not too harsh. I haven't gone down to skin or nothing. But what I did was I started with a three and bend down just down to a low one and a half. So what we've done is we've tried to maintain a little bit of weight through here. Not much that's going to puff out and just give you something that was like a nice sort of just a, a regular uniform cut on top just to help with them curls to match up and just keep everything quite low maintenance so when you are training or whatever you're doing you don't have to worry about putting product in if you don't want to as well it looks nice and it's all balanced as well is that all right thanks man thank you very much so guys to recap i mean this was just a sort of a haircut that was just going to suit Hoan and his lifestyle it's not it's not a massively over creative haircut but i think this is a haircut that that you've got to look at the, the clients in the chair more so than just looking at something that is on trend now when we spoke in our consultation, obviously uh, Juan is a, is a, a trainer as well, he trains Jiu Jitsu, so um, it's going to be, it's, it's constantly on the go, it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot, it's long hours as well, I, I, I know these guys train like mad, so I didn't want to do something that's going to be like, I, originally when he said that he wanted a heart, uh, a heart and, but I just knew with the curls it's going to be hard to maintain, it's going to be a lot of high maintenance as well. So I thought if we can do something that's just going to blend in with his lifestyle, something that's not going to be overly aggressively short on the back of the sides, because he's had skin phase before, and I don't think he was too keen. And he wanted something around a three. So I thought a three was a really good length to start with, because you don't see scalp exposure. But then it gives me a chance to work with some more length to create a bit of shape in it. So I just went for something that was very uniform, something that he already had, kind of had going on with the curls, but trying to work with the curls as well. So cutting it, just, just letting the curls do their own thing, letting them have their own texture. And then just blending it down into what I went down to like a one and a half on this around the very sides here, around the very uh, the very bottom, uh, and then just into a taper on the neck, um, just to try and keep a little bit of width in the hair as well through here. So I wanted to match up to the jawline and more so to the neck as well. So it was all kind of matching through. So it wasn't looking like it was like a cave here. It makes his neck look wider. I wanted to all look completely lean, and it, I kind of blend in with what he's working with. So um, we just went down to uh, from a three to a one and a half, and then just blended it into the top. We started at the top first as well, um, just to kind of create that shape with the curls. Completely uniform and just follow the shape of his head as well. So some of the snooks will go out well. It's not asymmetric, it's not left longer anywhere else. It's all going to go out balanced, which I think is nice. And also by going a little bit short on the neck, just gives a bit more longevity to it as well. Uh, and then just edging up the hairline, nothing too sharp or anything like that, just to kind of give it more strength to it. Um, and then that was pretty much it. Um, he can wear product if he likes. He doesn't have to, I don't think he needs to. Uh, I think the kale's going to have their own little thing going anyway, so it looks nice and natural. Uh, but if you would like to so wear something in this hair, I'd say a salt spray is good for that, to dry it into. Or you can use so a, a powder or even the tiniest little bit of, uh, of mac clay as well, if you just want to add something when it's going out. But I think this is going to work really well for your lifestyle. I think it's going to help you out a lot more when you're going out as well, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, and that's it. So yeah, happy? Thank you very much, man.